the final score, Wrexham 5, Solihull Moors nil, and the word you're looking for is wow. We've won every game at home this season in all competitions, and Solihull are a good team. And boy, oh boy, we look very good in that match. <sighs> it was a, a game which saw us revert naturally to our first team. Mendy kept his place on the left-hand side after impressing coming back from injury on Wednesday. And, well, I mean, it was it was so impressive. O'Connor got the nod. I think Young and Lee were, li were always liable to be two or three in the midfield. O'Connor got the nod and, well, we looked good from the outset. I know there were some people saying that they weren't happy with the first half. I was. I mean, to be honest, the thing is that Solly Hull are a good team and they did a decent job in the first half against us. I want to talk about rest defences. It was a clear example with them. They had the back three. Wing-backs very high up the pitch to try and force our wing-backs back. Didn't work. And Joey Jones, not that Joey Jones, their Joey Jones, sitting very deep in midfield in front of that back three. So rest defence was that when they didn't have the ball, they had that defensive shape, the trio with Jones in front. And they weren't moving out, particularly. And therefore, when Wrexham were turning the ball over, those players were, you know, forming a, a solid central defensive unit. And although I thought Wrexham played well in the first half, moved the ball about well, it was difficult to make clear-cut chances. There was lots of ingenuity, and there were lots of good ideas, and there were good performances. But Wrexham struggled to get the ball through that solid defensive block. Lots of shots blocked, lots of attempted through balls intercepted. Mullen, in particular, in the first half, was trying lots of things and he just wouldn't quite come off. Uh, and the reason was, like I said, that Solihull had that shape. And that shape also allowed them to, to get forwards. And they, they did show, you know, lively intent going forwards. But Wrexham are well-organised defensively now. It says, what is it, our fourth home clean sheet in a row in the league? Something like that. And, yeah, we are hard to break down. So they didn't create much. The one chance of note they created actually came in the first minute of the game. On my watch, it was 52 seconds when the, the chance passed. Wrexham got a throw in straight from the kickoff in Toza territory. And he hurled it in, but Solihull cleared it. And Andrew Dallas set off on a superb burst. He beat Mendy to it. So a two-on-two -two break. And he out, he, at first, he out-accelerated Mendy, which is quite a feat, and was charging through the middle. And it looked like he might be able to keep it going and be one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. But Mendy, excellent recovery run, kept with him and in the end managed to catch him and put the ball behind for a corner. Excellent recovery defending by Mendy, who would continue to be outstanding throughout. Uh, that was it, really, in terms of Sol Hill's stress on goal in the first half. Although Wrexham didn't create all that much. There was a real chance in the 13th minute, Mendy this time going forwards, cutting inside and hitting a shot, which Ryan Boots oh, is normally impressive against Wrexham, but I think we'll have to look at himself for a couple of the goals that were conceded. Didn't do very well. He fumbled it. He responded well, though, to make the second part of the double save because Mullen was on it like a flash, point-blank range, but the problem was so close that Root was a, uh, Boots rather, was able to hurl himself at Mullen and Mullen hit it first time, but, you know, I mean, the keeper got so close that Mullen would have been quite lucky to get it past him, even from that close range. And then the rest of the half, like I said, saw Wrexham looking to prompt. Elliot Lee, as ever, was, was moving around well and, and causing problems. The wing-backs were getting forwards and trying to stretch play. Palmer was playing very well, I thought, winning the duel against the centre-backs. But the chances weren't quite coming. Five minutes before the break... Wrexham did carve a nice one out. It was a lovely combination between Lee and Mullen. Lee and do, doing brilliantly initially just to nip in and take the ball away from a Solihull player with his head, then to run onto it and find Mullen to his right. Mullen popped the ball back to complete the one-two, and then Lee fed Mullen once more on the edge of the area. All really snappy, quick passing. Mullen, with a little bit of space to try the shot, tried to launch it into the top right corner with the outside of his right foot with power, and it just swerved away and missed the target. It was a great move, though, and a great hit, and a precursor for what was to come, because... Three minutes later, with two minutes and a half left, Wrexham did take the lead. And this was 
Well, this was certainly a precursor of what was to come because the way the goal came about was the game plan that Wrexham used to open up the match. And maybe that's the most pleasing element of this game. Wrexham having a clear plan and executing it superbly. So basically what happened was a Wrexham attack closed down, but Wrexham pressed really hard and forced just a, a clumped clearance from the corner flag. Now, because the clearance was made by the corner flag, Solly Hull had quite a deep line. And before the player who cleared it could get up the pitch, Tony Cliff attacked the ball in the halfway line and won a really good, decisive header and planted it straight to Ollie Palmer, who was unmarked in the box. Sort of situation where you think he's offside because the defensive line was higher than him. But as I said earlier, it wasn't because the right side of the defence was still trying to get up after clearing the ball. So Palmer back to goal, clear on goal, took it really well on his chest, pivoted, and as the defender starts to converge on him, hits a fantastic strike past Booth with power into the bottom left corner. A great finish by Palmer. He knew he had a chance. He didn't snatch at it. He kept his cool, and Wrexham had the lead. And that press would be the key thing that carried us through the rest of the match. Because Solly Hall were looking to pass the ball out from the back. Their centre-backs aren't as good on the ball as Wrexham's. And Solly Hall were a bit more committed to passing out from the back. Uh, they were playing short goal kicks and trying to draw Wrexham on, hoping that they'd bypass the pass and expose us. But we don't overcommit anymore. Talking about rest defence again. Tony Cliff naturally is more conservative than Clueth. And our pressing was excellent. It was organised. They chased players down in packs, closed off passing lanes, and just constantly forced errors out of Solly Hull. And I said in the commentary, and I, I want to repeat it, because it's one of the rare moments where I think I got it right. We scored the second goal in the 52nd minute, and frankly, the build-up play was the whole seven minutes of the second half that was far, because the pattern was just constant. Solly Hull getting the ball at the back, trying to pass out from the back, Wrexham pressing effectively and winning the ball back out of the pitch and trying to create a chance. And we did it again and again and again. Or, the alternative, what led to the first goal, forcing a hurried, desperate clearance, which meant we would win it in midfield and get on the front foot straight away. And we just kept doing it, kept repeating it, kept repeating it. Solly Hull, I've got to say, and this was true throughout the second half, failed to learn from their mistakes and kept making that same mistake and, and walking into the press until in the 52nd minute, it worked. Luke Young, I mean, what a player to have around when you're pressing. Winning the ball by the corner flag from James Jones as he tried to play a poor pass forwards. Uh, Joy Jones, beg your pardon. Uh, he worked it inside to Palmer, who, for the second time, showed real calmness in the box, allowed a little bit of space on the right. He very coolly controlled, turned, and picked out Mullen perfectly, and he slotted in a nice finish from about eight yards out, across the keeper, and in off the left post. And Wrexham were 2-0 up, and if I'm honest, the game felt pretty dead then. You didn't really see Solid Hull coming back into it that much. They did create a half chance, a corner, by Williams, which was met by Joey Jones, 10 yards out, he headed it back across goal, but put it off target. And then Wrexham just started to really pile it on. Uh, another opportunity coming with a nice patient move, which ended with Palmer picking it up left of centre and hitting a curler, which beats the keeper and just went wide of the far post. Before, well, the game really exploded in the 60th, the 60th minute. Initially... The danger came about, again, from Wrexham's excellent pressing. Goodger receiving it, up, facing his goal on the edge of the area, rather foolishly just decides to turn without knowing what was behind him. What was behind him? Luke Young, who won the ball back, and then it was a lovely piece of combination play. Ford, who was already up on the edge of the area, squaring it. Mullin dubbing it for Lee in a central possession, position in the D. Rather than hit it, though, he just played a cute little back-heeled flick to let Mullen double back on himself and hit a left-footed shot, which was arrowing into the top left corner, until Ryan Boot leapt up and made a brilliant save, pushing it onto the underside of the ball, the bar. The ball dropped down onto the line. Wrexham went up, appealing for the goal, but the linesman, quite rightly, said it hadn't crossed the line. And the ball bounced out, and Boot was able, eventually, to grab hold of it. And then they did it again, didn't they? Solly Hull Boot actually made a good underarm throw to try and break the press and get them out. But Stora turns into trouble. Young again was there. I mean, that's the advantage. Rather than playing him deeper, playing a bit higher up, 
he's just hoovering up possession in the opposition half. So Stora turns, Young is there, <coughs> Stora lunges in, he does actually get his foot to the ball first and hook it back towards his own goal, but he's really jumped in to do so and he follows through with his studs up right into Young's ankle. Both of them went down in a heap. Stora, who could easily have had two yellow cards in the first half, he very cynically fouled Elliot Lee and then pulled his shirt back when Lee beat him straight from the kickoff after the first goal. Well, he did get the red cards. And look, I mean, Stora, as I said in the commentary, is one of those blokes that when he plays for you, love him. When he doesn't play for you, you really dislike him because he's always in the referee. He's always uh, been a bit cute. Tony Cliff seemed to be clearly standing over him when he was getting treatment after the foul and pointing at him as if to say, he's not hurt. Um, but anyway, even Stora didn't argue when the referee delivered the red card. He actually had the red card out pretty much straight away and was just standing with the red in his hand, waiting for Stora to stand up after treatment. And Stora hobbled away. Whether he was actually that badly hurt, who knows. I do know he won't be playing against Wrexham in the next match because he's suspended now. But anyway, so Wrexham did that. And right, we were in complete control of the game anyway. It may well have ended up 5-0, but Solihull collapsed a little bit after that as well. They didn't make any attempts to, to change their defensive shape, by the way. So they almost looked like they were thinking, yeah, okay, this game's gone now. Let's not take a gamble and throw an attacking player on. And yeah, they, they, were, they were picked apart and, and, and folded rather. Wrexham had a goal disallowed uh, five minutes later. Correctly, I think. Toes are slinging in a long-throated near post. Tony Cliff, good movement, attacking the near post. Flicked it on beautifully. Palmer hooked it on target. Boots blocked it with his body, but it span away from him, and the backspin was sending it into the net. Mullen decided to step up and blast it into the, the net, just as it was about to cross the line, just to make sure, and to nick a goal. Um, the offside flag went up. Palmer was clearly asking the question, was it me who was offside? Because let's be honest... If Palmer wasn't offside, he'd scored, but then Mullen, in nicking the goal, had made it offside. Mullen was definitely offside. Um, who knows what was said to him? I think Palmer was probably given offside. I thought at the time he looked obviously offside, looking at the replays I did as well. Looking at him again, there is a defender behind him. I still think Palmer was offside. Let's say if it wasn't him, then it would have been a goal to Palmer. But I think, but it was tighter than I realised. Wrexham kept going again, Wrexham pressing and winning the ball back, and Lee feeding Anthony Ford, who drove to the centre of Solihull's defence, but then tried to hit it and curl it round the keeper, got it too straight and hit it straight at him. But within a minute, Wrexham had another goal, Lee on the left-hand side, running into the box, into a crowd of defenders, trying to pirouette his way through them as he'd done so often. Couldn't quite manage it, but he retained possession. And popped it to Mendy. And Mendy decided to try something. And he executed it beautifully. Running in, engaging his man. Then rolling him to get around the back of the, the box. Uh, and then driving a, a lovely ball in the goal mouth. Hayden attacking it in the six-yard box. Got there and drilled it home from very close range. Hayden celebrating by making a turn with his fingers. Double figures from centre-back in December. Aaron Hayden. Wow. And we just kept on going. Kept on going. Lee... Played the most astonishingly beautiful pass <clears throat> on the right flank, lifting it over the fence with the outside of his foot to put Luke Young one on one with the keeper. Tightish angle, and to be fair, Boots got out quickly and spread himself well. And Young, in trying to steer it past him, just rolled it narrowly wide of the right hand side. Then it was Lee again, really turning on the magic. A super run. He skinned one man, nutmegged another, and hurtling through the middle of the defence. Just overran it as he lost his balance and had to just toe poke it from the edge of the area. An easy save for Boot. But within a minute, Wrexham had got the fourth. Palmer hitting a powerful strike from 25 yards. The defender, Goodger, lunged at it and deflected it. The ball looped over the keeper, hit the woodwork, came out to Mullen, and he kept his balance well to volley it into the empty net. Wrexham immediately gave Mendy a little rest, bringing him uh, Callum McFadgen on. And soon after that, Mullen had completed his hat-trick. Ford, after a nice build-up, drilling a powerful shot from the edge of the area. Boot should have done better, really. It was just above his head. <clears throat> I accept awkward one to sort of uh, deflect side one side or the other. But if he wasn't going to hold on to it, he had to do that. And so he just pushed it straight down towards his feet. And Mullen, quick as a flash, was there to put the ball in for his hat-trick. His third hat-trick of the season already. James Jones immediately came on to give Elliot Lee a rest and a standing ovation. 
Sam Dolby did likewise for Paul Mullen. And then in the closing minutes, Wrexham had a, a couple more opportunities. Firstly, Tunnicliffe winning another header in midfield and planting it down the line. Boot racing out of his box as Palmer chased after it. And Boot was a bit lucky. He did just about get that ahead of Palmer. And the ball got stuck between his feet for a moment. If Palmer had managed to just get a toe poke on, he probably knocked it out and straight into the net. But Boot managed to get away and ended a cute little turn, which was dangerous, but executed well and got the ball to safety. As we went into added time, another opportunity. James Jones of a, a super ball over the top. Dolby running in behind the defence was a bit unlucky because, again, Boots, whose handling wasn't great, had made a good decision of when to come off his line and raced off his line, meaning that Dolby had to try and do something with the ball immediately and it was just bouncing out of his reach. He managed to get a tour up but couldn't do anything other than stick it out for a goal kick. And in the closing moments of the game, Wrexham again putting pressure on. Palmer on the edge of the box, drilling a powerful shot. Kelleher deflecting it behind from the corner. From that corner, the ball was swung in and off the ball. So I understand why it was missed. Clear penalty on Hayden Howe grabbing hold of his shirt. Hayden managing to lose him. So Howe just keeping hold of his shirt and sprinting, pulling and pulling and pulling. Hayden eventually went down. The referee didn't spot it. Shame that. But five was all right. <laughs> Let's be honest. What a performance it was. I mean, looking through the, the players, Howard's genuinely unemployed this time. Uh, just had absolutely nothing to do. Had more to do than Lanes and did, less to do should I, than Lanes and had on Wednesday against Gunthorpe, which is saying something. Um, across the back, Hayden was excellent. I thought really terrific defensively. Apart, quite apart from getting his goal, but he was. He was really in control of the situations. I thought Toza, in a low-key way, was excellent too. There were a lot of times in Solihull who did ask questions of us, especially in the first half, but trying to work in dangerous little balls towards the edge of the area, and Toza really snuffed down a lot. And then Tunnicliffe, rock solid, and also got himself his first assist with his head, planting the ball back for Palmer. He was looking a few times to be direct like that. He, he looked like he, he, he'd seen something or been instructed to exploit something and was was trying to play those balls down the flank. And like I said, it worked. The wing-backs were excellent. Ford getting forwards really well. would be a, maybe a, a little disappointed not to have got more shots off on goal, to be honest, but he got into some decent positions. And Mendy was outstanding, I thought. Defensively, he was good, but going forwards, they, they, he was giving them a real fright. Following on from Wednesday, he had an excellent game, Mendy, again. What a good week he's had. Um, in midfield, O'Connor was lovely and smooth in the anchor position, kept the ball going, kept moving the ball nicely, holding on to possession, unperturbed under pressure. Uh, Young, is the most notable things he was doing, was that his brilliant part in the, the pressing system. The number of times he won the ball back high up the pitch, terrific stuff from him. And Elliot Lee, well, we all made him out of the match. In the commentary team, the three of us were all saying, gosh, it's really hard to choose. There are four or five players who in any other game would have been out of the match. And then we all chose Lee because he just was bewitching. He was magnificent. So Solihull just couldn't stop him. He was running at people, beating people at will. He was, he was imaginative. His ingenuity is terrific. Wonderful play by Lee. What a beautiful performance and following on from a number of beautiful performances. And then up front, Mullen, like I said, it wasn't quite coming off in the first half. You could see he was trying to make something happen. And then in the second half, he just started finding the net. In all time, unlucky as well with the one that didn't quite go over the line. That Boots made a brilliant save from. Palmer was excellent as his foil. Really caused issues up front. The centre-backs just couldn't handle him physically. He held the ball up beautifully. He spread it around beautifully. He was a threat with his shots as well and scored that crucial first goal. And then the subs, none of them got a great length of time on the pitch. But McFadgen was lively and had a couple of little moments going forwards. Not much to do going backwards, to be honest with you. James Jones played that lovely ball at the top and did that classic James Jones thing of, I'm only on for 10 minutes, so I better try and fit in 90 minutes of running in 10 minutes. He's just everywhere. Like he always is, isn't he, really, to be fair. He's everywhere in the last 10 minutes, even when he's put in 80 hard minutes of graft. And then the other substitute, Dolby, worked hard, didn't quite get chances, dropping his way. Brilliant stuff from Wrexham. Solihull Moors will be tough when Wrexham go to their place. We rarely get good results there. And they're a better side than they looked here. And in the first half, and spells, they did show what they got. But goodness me, that's just why that was such an impressive performance. Was that the best we've played this season? I mean, the wonderful thing is it's really hard to tell.
because we're always looking really good. There's so many great performances to choose from. Fabulous stuff. So remember, the Saudi Yellow Way game will be live on Wrexham Player. All the usual good stuff will come out. And the highlights of this match will be coming out on YouTube at 10 o'clock. But they're already on Wrexham Player, of course. Wrexham Player is the first place to look for everything, including highlights. So, with the final score of Wrexham 5, Solihull Moors 0, I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC.